BBC Micro came out when I was 16 and I'd been fascinated by computers for 10 years, but only been able to own a computer for a couple of years. And before the BBC Micro, the computers that I could afford were incredibly unsophisticated, you know, glorious, uh, glorified pocket calculators. And so I got a job working in a computer shop in order to have more access to computers. And I think it was while I was there that I then started writing articles for magazines and so on again, basically, so I could have more access to computers. So uh, I remember my publisher showed me a BBC Micro sometime before the launch, it must have been autumn 81. And the thing I remember most clearly about it was the, it came with the Micro VTEC color monitor, which was really famous at the time. Um, uh, and I'd never seen such crisp, clear color displayed. And it was just like a visceral, oh my God, I want to make that screen do things. And, you know, at the time, television, um, everything, all the screens we encountered, we saw things that were made by other people. And so kind of having power over that kind of very, very pure, beautiful hardware. And obviously the thing, before I'd seen it, the thing we were all excited about with the BBC Micro was that it was a no compromise design and had all this expansion potential and so on. And the machines that I'd been used to working with before then, like the ZX80 or the MK14, were marvels of engineering, um, largely because they were engineered down to a cost. And so, the miracle of the ZX81, say, is how few chips it has in it. Um, and it didn't look like that was a constraint in the BBC Micro. There are chips all over it, and they used a uh, an expensive kind of RAM and all kinds of very highly engineered things, which, of course, made it very expensive. Um, but uh, but that, was, that was incredible because it was as if home computing had had a stamp of approval and the stamp of approval was an authority figure you know the bbc um saying this is a legitimate thing to do um and in the process they'd they'd kind of raised the bar by making computers of a significantly higher quality and in a more thoughtful uh more thoughtful way I did do books. I wrote games for the BBC, but I didn't really like games myself, so I wasn't very good at writing games. Um, I got involved in writing graphics for the BBC as well. I used to do on the BBC Micro these little animations that ran between programmes before Philip Schofield. And in fact, I was there on Philip Schofield's first day, and I used to be there sometimes pressing the space bar, and you know, a cat would come out and kick over a can of paint, and it would say, next, Lupita, that kind of thing. Um, and I just kind of, well, went on to do all kinds of interesting things. I got interested in particular things to do with computers. So I was interested in languages, so I wrote compilers, and. And then at some point, I was interested in money, so I went and worked for an investment bank. You know. <laughs> and now I've got, in fact, exactly um, the life that a 17-year-old me would have wanted about 15 years ago. I accidentally started an open source project that is now sufficiently popular that I, I make all my money, my income from that by doing, um, not by selling the software, but by doing consultancy around it, and selling services and so on. And that's a heavenly life. I get to collaborate with brilliant people all around the world. One of the characteristics of the BBC Micro is that it was what, the last sort of generation of computers that somebody like me, a teenager sitting down in front of it, could understand the entire computer. You know, with enough patience, you could dig around and understand what every single, com every single visible component, perhaps I should say, of the computer did and how they fitted together. And that's an astonishing feeling of power, particularly I think when you're young and you don't, you don't necessarily understand everything in the real world, but to have this kind of bounded world where you've got this complete understanding. So I think the BBC Micro was the first time 
I felt that feeling um, that you get when, when you're a programmer in combination with a platform that you know really well, so that you feel like you could do lots of things. You're kind of bursting with potential. And it's just a product of you know, their thoughtful engineering and um, the fact that these things were simple enough for one brain to understand. Whereas now, you know, even a trivial looking game on the app store, it probably takes multiple brains you know, to put that together. It seemed um, we, 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 we felt um, uh, almost ostracized for, um, uh, for being interested in computers uh, you know, up until some point around that. And then, I don't know, when electronic music really took off and everything, at some point, <laughs> computers became cool. And then, of course, I, I got the last laugh because there's 1978 with my mum trooping people up to look at computers in my bedroom. And now all of those people now have computers in their pockets and they're obsessed and addicted to them just like I was. So I kind of love that.